How's it going, everyone? The stream will be starting in about 10 minutes. Um, hello there, uh, Kevin. Uh, Michael Classic TDA. Um, oh, look, everyone. Kevin's back. Kevin, we love you, Kevin. I am so funny. Um, the hear um, <laughs> the, uh, the thing ready here. Um, what's going on, Rosebud? Nineteen ninety-two. What's going on, Auto Soldier? Um, ah, uh, shoot. Uh, there we go. All right, there. How's it going, Tail Skull? How's it going, uh, Red Spike Seventeen? Where are the other sixteen at? Um, <laughs> what's going on, Dino Kaiju? All right, just hearing a lot of movie news that are announced on CinemaCon. That is true. Um, you know, obviously they're obviously they're gonna keep uh. Obviously, they're going to keep plenty of things in, under, you know, under wraps uh, because the Sonic fandom is the Sonic fandom and they know it. Uh, so um, probably a good move. Uh, regardless, I'm regardless. I'm excited because I already know. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No shadow voice yet. But later on down. The road. Yeah, exactly. Kevin, like point exactly the point I'm trying to make is just like we know how the Sonic fandom is. Um they're gonna they're gonna keep they're gonna and they definitely know that too. So they're gonna keep it under wraps as much as possible just because uh they are they can be kind of insufferable sometimes and we know it. Not everybody, but you know, obviously that's very much a minority. Uh but you know you y'all y'all here know the kind. <laughs> Go on social media enough and you'll find at least one of them. Uh, uh give me one second. I need to charge my I need to Get my charging cable from my phone real quick because uh, I usually look at the chat from my phone, you know, just in case. How you been, Josh? I ain't see you in a while. Yeah, I've just been, I've, you know, just been, uh, I mean, I mean, obviously, as everybody here knows, I've, you know, I've, you know, I've been, uh, I very, I very much have never really, I very much haven't really, like, my words, I can't talk today. Uh, it's definitely been a while since I've seen you, but like, <laughs> I, but like I, I mean, obviously, um, obviously, I'm very much still, you know, you know, knock on, knock on wood, alive and kicking, knock on wood. That's gonna keep on happening, and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you and everyone else here knows uh, if I start rambling on, just stop me. Uh, um, also, you here know I can give ultimate a run for his money sometimes, and that's probably saying something, which is saying something. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get one our um our people up. All right. Am I coming in? Loud and clear. Nice. Can you hear me? Yep. And uh, let me just make sure. Rui, everything good on your end? Uh, should be. We all good? Yep. Yep. Everything's good. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Alrighty, in that case, I will go ahead and uh, I will go ahead and uh, start up the stream real quick. Um, just go ahead and uh, yeah, in for the for the twitches. Um, <laughs> as a really weird way for me to say it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but anyways, let me just go ahead and check Twitch real quick on my phone to see if everything is good there. Uh, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I do not want to update the app right now. Twitch, uh, quit playing with me. Uh, yep, we <laughs> we are good to go. I will go into the audience and uh, yeah, there is. Okay, well, all welcome right. everyone. Thank you all for coming into our Q and A with Rui, animator extraordinaire. Funny enough. Help. Today we just happened to get some Sonic movie and Transformer movie news from CinemaCon. So, what better way to celebrate than to do a Q and A yes. with someone who's known for doing stuff with both? Bit of a coincidence, yeah. It's uh, the irony. <laughs> I'm joined here by my co-host. My name is Matt Clements, also known as MC Voices. I'll be your co-host, along with my other co-host, Doom the Meme Queen, aka Gabby Doom. <laughs> yes, aka Gabby Doom, absolutely. So anyway, we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna start out with a few questions of our own. Starting with this, Rui. How did you get okay. started with animation? Um, okay, so basically, um 
I uh, so basically um, from when a young age, I've been watching uh, all the other sort of really big Sonic animators on YouTube. So Bellina Productions, Sasso Studios, Shadow Seven Five Nine, Mike Darklighter, all those guys. Um, I've been watching them for as long as I can remember. And um, I always love their stuff. And um, I always kind of thought like, wow, that'd be really cool to try and uh, make some stuff myself. So eventually sort of in like my last couple of years of high school, I um, I uh, sort of got my feet wet with animation. I jumped into Source Filmmaker at last and um, I sort of uh, made some little things and then um, just kind of worked on my craft. And well, here I am now, uh, just kind of worked my way up the ladder and I've got a bit of a following myself. And um yeah, it's not huge, but um, I'm happy with uh, what I've achieved. It's still greater than anything I imagined. So, yeah, it's kind of how I got my in on all this. All right. Okay, so next question. What first got you into Sonic? Um, okay, so this is an interesting story. So, um, so it was actually uh, the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics series where I first got into Sonic. Um, basically, mm-hmm. like uh, around that time... I, uh, my parents had gotten me uh, a Nintendo DS for, I think it was my seventh birthday or something. And I got a handful of games with it. Um, I was already aware of who Mario was. And one of those games was uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. So at the time, initially, when I first got, I just played the Mario characters because I was familiar with them, but not the Sonic cast. And then eventually, I remember I gave, um, I decided to, I tried Sonic and think it was like a 100 meter sprint or something. And because he's the fastest character, he won so easily. I'm like, whoa, this guy's pretty cool. So, um... Like, uh, I got sort of, I, that's, I instantly was, became hooked on Sonic, and then I started playing the other characters in that game, Shadow, Knuckles, Tails, all of them. And then, of course, you know, I picked up the sequel at the Winter Olympics, and then eventually I thought, well, what's, what are Sonic games like, maybe? And then it just kind of evolved from there. So, like, I picked up uh, Colors, Black Knight, uh, Unleashed for the Wii, and Rush around the same time. And that's kind of, and they're kind of the games that got me invested, but G- Generations was the game that made me a hardcore fan because that's the game that made me go back and try out the classics from the Genesis and the adventure era and all that. Awesome. I actually got my start with the Olympics as well. <laughs> oh, there you go then. So next question, what got you into Transformers? Oh, Ooh, okay. Yeah. So, um, this is another pretty interesting story. So, um, I got into Transformers a bit before I got into Sonic. Um, so sort of around, uh, it was about when I was about six or seven, I want to say when, um, yeah, like, again, I was around when I was about six and, uh, my cousin was, uh, watching, um, the uh, anime, the Transformers animated show from 2007. Like some people probably remember that from Cartoon Network uh, back in the day. It was running around the same time when the first movie dropped. And um, but yeah, like, uh, he was watching that on um, on TV uh, one morning. Like, and I was sitting there, and like I was kind of like, "What's this?" And I was really invested. I really thought this was so cool. Like transforming robots and everything was like the coolest thing ever. And uh, his dad or my uncle um, sort of noticed what we were watching. And he, um, being a kid who grew up in the 80s, he watched the G1 cartoon a lot. So he had a couple of old tapes um, from that show. And he went ahead, hey, boys, um, this is this, this is Transformers, but like from when I was a kid. So he put it on. And like, although we could tell it was a bit old school, we still really loved watching it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, how I got into Transformers. And it just kind of evolved from there. Like, you know, went to Transformers Prime, G1 um beast wars and eventually the live action films so yeah again just started with one show and then i just kind of uh expanded from there nice now what made you decide to start up sonic and the autobots and bring the two franchises together well so as some could probably guess like i mean we've all seen like you know a bunch of different crossovers with franchises like you know we've seen the super mario brosies um you know we had the uh, sonic mega man crossover and everything so and whilst yes there's lots of different things but i've always kind of seen the potential in sonic transformers i know it's a bit of an obscure thing like you know you know blue hedgehog giant robots but the thing is sonic's used to fighting giant robots like when you think about it and like i mean if anything i'd say he's Sonic X Season 3, the Metarex saga, that's probably the closest thing we're going to get to an official Sonic Transformers crossover. And I'm not saying the Metarex are direct ripoffs of Transformers, but that's, there's some resemblance there. Like, let's be real. So, um, like, so I've kind of always seen the potential in Sonic and Transformers. And I think IDW's, like, well, in the past, like, have kind of teased about maybe potentially seeing the idea to do it. Like, I've, um, I remember a friend of mine showed me uh, an interview or one of, I think, an in, or something, or a moment from Ian Flynn's podcast where if that did ever happen, how he would probably go about it. So, again, it's not saying it's going to happen because 
you know, I think IDW recently lost the rights to Transformers, but but still, like, I mean, I've always seen the potential, and I just kind of thought, if Hasbro and Sega aren't going to do this, I'm going to do it, and, well, here we are now. It's uh, become fairly popular, to say the least, uh, more popular than I ever expected, so, uh, yeah, just thank you to everyone who's taken the time to watch this silly little crossover fanfic of mine. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So... And now we've got a few questions out of the way. Let's move over to audience questions. We've got a few people with their hands raised. And now, right. Gabby, you're up. Hi. You're up yeah. at, at the top. Do you mind and selecting the first person to select a question? Sure thing. Okay, there is only like a few people, but that's that should be good. How about we go with... Uh, let's go with uh, Nervous Maria, if they would like to come up. And then call her up. Hello there. Uh, Hello. Uh, you there? And can you, are you there? Uh, uh, said, maybe uh, not. It's just leaving the panel, then uh, coming back. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh dear. Looks like we got our first Discord, everyone. Yeah, great. And it's not even like like deep into okay. the panel. <laughs> when like right. eight minutes in, I think. Good start. They're prize. Okay, so I just, just go into the chat and type in your question into the chat. Okay, if that's okay. Yeah, if that's okay. I don't know if they can hear us. Uh... Yeah, maybe that's the issue. Yeah, all right. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, Gabby, mind selecting another person? Okay. Hand raise? Okay, this time I'll go for uh, Jowsy's Rocket. Come on up. Oh. Yeah. Hey there. That's Hello. So all right, it's teasing time. All right, not for real, for real. I'm not. I ain't teasing here. <laughs> Brother. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, all right. So, my question for, uh, of course, Rui. Um, um, how long did it took you to at least like uh, get the idea of making the Sonic and the Autobots, or how long did it took you to make the script or ideas of it? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, like, how long did the preparation and all that take? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um. Yeah, I think that was about, oof. I mean, I've been thinking about this like ever since I was like about 14 and I'm um, 21 now. So, I mean, that's not how long it took me to actually work on it. Like when I actually sort of decided like, okay, I'm going to make this a re I'm going to make this happen. I think it took me about oh, 10 months, I want to say, because I sort of wrote out like a rough draft on how like I wanted to have like, well, at least the first batch of episodes play out because right now we're in season one. And I've got multiple seasons planned. So um, so right now, like, yeah, it's, we're currently in season one. And, like, I've kind of got a rough version of that written out. And, of course, so that was the first obstacle. Then, of course, the next obstacle was trying to, you know, well, of course, you know, sort of uh, make sure I could, uh, you know, get enough assets and, like, you know, 3D assets. You know, the software I had was capable enough. And, of course, getting a uh, voice cast that was suitable. So, of course, MC and Gabby up here, like, you know, they do great things for me, as well as some others that are in the chat as well. So, um, so um, but, yeah, like, I mean, so it, it does take a long process. But, yeah, it was, like, about some, I think, about 10 months at least of uh, prep work before it finally saw the light of day. So, um, it's not easy planning these things, but if you're passionate about it and you're committed to it, then don't let that stop you. That's what I say. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's it's really great to like think of an idea that you um you had for like many years and come to reality. And I'm actually glad because at first I thought it was strange idea at first, but like one thing we all gotta learn: don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Like, and as I kind of said before, like I mean, I know it's a bit of a weird kind of. Well, it's, on paper, it sounds a bit kind of weird, but I've always seen the potential of it's if it's written properly and everything and i mean like i say some of quite a few people seem to enjoy it so i mean i don't think i'm really doing anything wrong per se so uh yeah yeah mm -hmm, i get that and yeah because i'm actually glad that um you and the other cast have been doing a great job with that project and i'm proud of it and glad i met you yeah, I mean, um, I'm just glad lots of people are really uh, into it. And um, I'm just glad it's, uh, for the most part, it's been a genuinely positive, it's been getting a general positive response because you never really know if this thing is going to be like, oh, like, what a stupid idea or like, what's this guy thinking kind of thing. But you know, for the most part, everyone seemed to really like it. So, yeah, I'm just really grateful for all the support. I mean, probably it's because like, well, yeah, like what we said earlier, it's probably a strange idea, but it isn't a terrible idea in paper at all. Like, sure. Yeah. Like, um, one thing you have to do is just make it right. That's all you have to do is at least make it right. You know? Yeah. Mm hmm. And it works. Yeah, anyway, anyway, thanks for your question. Drowsiest. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Now make me a sandwich, you two. No. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we have the necessary ingredients. Anyway, thanks for the question. Mm hmm. No problem. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I gotta say. Yep. If you please go to the audience. In the audience there or what? Go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll choose the next person. Let's go with Kevin. Hello. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hey, yeah, everyone. Kevin's back. Hi, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I knew that was coming. So, this so thing my about question Kevin. To, my question to Rui is sent you over in Australia. What one piece of, of Sonic thing you wish you could get? Say, like, the comics mm -hmm. or, the, or the merchandise that you're not able to get e easily. Ooh, I mean, I mean, that's hard to say, like, as, as, as you said, like, I mean, it's here in Australia, we don't get a lot of privileges. Like, I'm still really annoyed that the symphony's not coming to Australia. That's probably the thing that annoys me most of all. I know it's not really, like, merch or anything, but still, it's just kind of like, it's just, you know, like, I feel like, I mean, I know quite a few other Australian Sonic fans, but then again, compared to, like, all the other, like, other Sonic fans I know that are from overseas and everything, like, we're a small bunch, like... It's pretty clear that oh, I don't know, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's just say yeah, just wish Sonic got a bit more recognition here in Australia. Like, cause I mean, it's a great franchise, and uh, yeah, I just feel like um, whilst he doesn't seem like the most popular thing uh in our country, I feel like you know, yeah, it's just um, I just fish. I just I just wish Australia maybe um would just do more things with him, like whether it's Symphony or like maybe other sorts of things, like uh. Like maybe like I mean like I mean I know conventions maybe be kind of a bit hard to do and everything but but still like I mean just in general I just wish you know Australia was more thought thought about for Sonic. Yeah, well, ho hopefully one day. Hopefully you also got an opportunity to uh, pick up some stuff when you were here for in person last year. Yeah, I um, got some things uh, from the con last year, and I'm, again, I'm a little disappointed I can't make it this year, unfortunately. But uh, 2025, that's going to be my objective for Revo in person. Yeah, hey, there you go. We'd love to have you back. Yeah, I would love to be there again. Thank you for answering my question. And no thanks problem. for your question, Kevin. I mean, before we pick someone else, I got a text question here from Michael the Wolf. Hey, Rui, do you work on short one-off projects if you're dealing with burnout? Uh, yes, I often do that because um, I'll say this right now to anyone who like uh, like who aspires to be to create content and everything. Whilst, yes, it's always good to have something that is the big crowd pleaser, like in my case, Sonic and the Autobots, that's the one thing everyone seems to really enjoy and gets the most attention. But the uh, the thing with, um, but of course, the thing is, if you if I were to work on Sonic and the Autobots 24-7, 365, I would get sick of it really quick. And that's part of the reason why Episode 5 is taking me quite a while, because for a good few months there, I was just really burnt out on working on that. Like I just didn't really have the motivation. Like I was like, I wanted to work on other things. Like, you know, like I wanted to work on, you know, tornado squad again. And if I, and this, the new idea I sort of come up with pretty recently nights of the sky, I wanted to work on that and try the new night fury models I got. So, um, like, I mean, uh, like again, so that's the thing. So as, so to answer the question, yes, I do often, if I am just getting really flat on something or if I'm just not feeling the motivation for Sonic and the Autobots or another big project, I will work on something short. So whether that's bloopers or maybe just a short little silly skit or something like that, I don't know. But um, like, I'll give you an example. Like, um, you remember MC that uh, use Vector's head thing that I got you in on? Yes. That was uh, that was that was a little way I kind of uh, relieved um from you know sort of uh burnout, and that was a good way to work on it. Like, I got that finished within a few days, and uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden the motivation was back. It's like sometimes you just need to do something to refresh yourself and you know keep things new, like and rather than just the same. It's just the same old uh, meal every day, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's one of my favorite projects I've voiced for. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. You did it really well. I actually threw out my throat screaming as Vector like that. But, uh, it but, too painful. but I just had, but I, all I had to take was a lozenge and I felt better. And that's good. That's good. And then I went to see a theater show that night, just a few oh. hours, just like an hour or two later. Nice. Nice. Okay, now, Rui, do you mind calling up the next person? There's a little uh, icon. Sure. There's a little icon in the top right with the hands raised with the number. My, um, I have do I see uh top right? Hold on. Let's see the see. hand cut. You see the hand icon with the number six on the 
I don't um, see that. No. Are you serious? Oh, wait a second. Uh, I don't think actually, I've got... how about how about we do this for you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Who do you want to call up? Um. Let's see who's in here. Um. How about um, Dino Kaiju? Hey. All right. Come on up. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi hello. there. Hello. Been doing good so far. All right. Uh, first off, Gabby, Doom, always great seeing you two. And a pleasure meeting you, Rui. Thank you. Thank you. Just know this ain't about me or MC. This is about Rui. So I, ask I, him I, a question or uh, anyway. I, I, I know, Doom. Yeah. I, you know, I, you just got to salute the co-host, even if the panel is for someone else. <laughs> I appreciate the respect. <laughs> but this ain't about us. <laughs> uh, doom. <laughs> anyway, so um, Rui, um, first off, um, I am also a Transformers fan. I've been a fan uh, since 2002, actually, starting off with the Unicron trilogy with Transformers Armada. So I've oh, been nice a fan of once uh, for yeah, I've been a fan f- for uh, for a long time. You could say. <laughs> yep. Good to hear. All right. So <clears throat> my question to you, Rui, is this: so. Now, obviously, this being a crossover, you would have like two different fandoms uh, for for these two different franchises out there. I mean, then again, these two franchises aren't too different when when it comes to crossovers. I mean, heck, like I said in the uh, in the discussion, like Transformers d- did a crossover with My Little Pony and all that stuff in the comics, yeah, so it's no exactly. strange to that. That and also Ghostbusters as well. So there's that. Um, but anyway, so oh, sorry, you were about to say something. Oh, no, I just said I was just uh, acknowledging what you said about the crossovers. That's all. Oh yeah, sure. So, but yeah, um, but again, like, um, like obviously from here, like when it, obviously us being Sonic fans, everyone knows about Sonic and all that stuff. Like, you know, there's gonna be obviously references to like the games and other stuff and all that stuff. But when it comes to Transformers, like it's a big franchise as well. Like not just for the cartoons. Like obviously you got the toys, the comics, the movies, the video games, and all that stuff. So I have to ask, for Sonic and the Autobots, are there any story beats that you are taking inspiration for when it comes to the Transformers stuff, uh, for the Transformers side of the story? Like, taking, like, stuff from the comics or or the shows and what in particular. Like, I know, like, some references, like, for example, like, um, when Prime, when, Op- when Optimus Prime was talking about the whole thing with the war on Cybertron, that is... That is definitely taking inspiration from uh, Transformers Prime, for example. Yeah, like so. Um, so as you said, yeah, like I definitely do leave a lot of references. I try to sort of, so, so, sort of for this kind of AU that I've got, kind of building. I'm trying to draw elements from lots of different things that I like. So, um, as you said, like you know, yeah, so the main origin is very similar to Transformers Prime, but of course, there's other elements there from like the War for Cybertron games. Um, and of course, I try to make sure there's a very good mixed bag in there because I know some people, who, like all well, these people, everyone's got different opinions. So you want to try and make sure there's something in there for everyone. Like, you know, you don't want it to be like, you know, like whilst, yes, I kind of use um, for like, like the on earth setting and everything that's definitely very G1 based. But of course, you know, I try to make sure there's still elements of everything in there, even some things that maybe I'm not super fond of. Like, um, like I've got a very mixed, uh, a mixed perception on the live action films, like well, at least some of the earlier ones. But I still try to keep some elements from them in there because I know lots of people started with the live action film. So, um, like I think it's just trying to create a mixed, a good mixed bag, a good mixed environment, to where everyone can be satisfied. That's sort of what I try to do with my stuff. Um, if that answers your question. Yeah, I think in a way that kind of answers my question. Yeah, like I thought, like some people, well, like, like let's say there are some fans, like mostly casual fans, like they'd say, "Oh, I know from this," but then you be you would have like some obscure reference for like something like some people don't know, like from the comics or something like that. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I, I do, I do enjoy a good reference. Like I mean, I've done that a few times with Sonic as well. Like you know, in Episode Three, you know, where Sonic was under the security camps from Sonic X. Or when Knuckles fell out of the uh, the portal from Episode Four, that was like a Sonic Six reference. So, again, yeah, I do try to like leave little references here and there, just to sort of show that it's like, um, just to sort of for, for little giggles and everything. But uh, but overall, I try to um, kind of uh, keep things fairly original while still drawing inspiration from already existing elements. Ah, uh, yeah, that I think that pretty much answers. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a really good answer, and yeah, that's. That's pretty much understandable. Also, speaking of Knuckles, shout out to MC yeah. Voices, who is the voice of Knuckles in that series. Yeah, I'm like Sonic. I don't chuckle. Exactly. Anyway, thanks for your question, Kaiju. No problem. If I get another question, I'll raise my hand up. So, uh, catch you guys All later. Right. 
Okie doke. Um, okay, now, Gammy, want to select the next person? I'm sorry if you hear a guitar in the back. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Anyways, uh, how about we go for, uh, let's go for, um, Nova the Brawler something, the Brawler King or something. I don't know what that says. Cuts uh, off. King Prime, okay. What is up? Hey there. Hey. Yo, what is going on right now? Things are going up, up here. You got a question? Yeah, it's a question. I got two questions, actually. Okay, ask one, then then we'll go down to the audience, and then you can raise your hand again, and we'll call you up again later. Okay. Okay, my question for Rui, what do you do in your spare time while you're not doing animation? Ooh, um, okay, so like uh, hobbies outside of animation. Um, well, let's see, I, um... I mean, I play a lot of games, of course, in my free time. Like, I uh, jump online with a lot of my... Uh, in-person friends like play some stuff with them often at nine just to kind of you know let off a bit of steam after a long days of work um th- i'm also really into uh sports as well like three in particular um uh, australian rules football formula one and cricket like if people follow me on instagram a lot of people will know like i just uh <laughs> i post a lot of things for- about formula one in there um and I mean, I do a lot of uh, running and cycling as well because, you know, animating isn't the most physically demanding job. So you got to try and stay fit somehow. I don't just like, uh, like I sort of, just, I sort of do that whenever I get a spare chance. But other than that, I mean, um, yeah, it's just kind of the general things I do. I mean, of course, I do the occasional thing. Like if, you know, if me and my friends organize something like a theme park day or a day at the go-kart track or something. But, but still, like overall, it's just kind of um, just pretty general things I do outside of animating when I get the chance. Oh. That is inter- that is an interesting choice. Yeah, I mean, like, well, it's just sort of, um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just, I mean, I see this pretty casual stuff. I mean, I'm not sure if that's, would, I mean, I'm sure it's different for everybody else, but I mean, that's just kind of my life outside of uh, the uh, YouTube realm, I suppose you could say. <laughs> anyway, thanks for your question, no? No problem. So happy to be here, by the way. No problem. Well, thanks for coming. Right now, I'm going to select the next person. Uh, I'm going to try Nurse Maria again. See if it works this time. Hello there? Uh, hello? Oh, hold uh, on. Uh, you're muted, by the way. Let's see. Okay. Is it still not working? Guess not. Why don't you go to the dis- discussion chat and type your answer, da- type your question down in the discussion chat. And we'll answer it there. All right. So sorry about that. Okay. Instead, let's bring, let's bring someone else up. Uh... Let's bring up uh, Tailsco. Uh, Tailsco, you're muted. Uh, we still can't hear you. Why must it do this? I don't know. It's Discord. Yeah. As Eggman would say, Discord, everyone! Yep, pretty anyway, much. Anyway, same thing. Just type your question in the discussion chat. We'll try and answer it there. All right, now let's call someone else, else, else up. Uh, let's bring up Cutie Cat. Okay, okay. I I can't I can't be here for long. I gotta go eat. But first of all, yeah. oh god. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So now my question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. But now my question. Okay. So now my question. Ro- Rooster, you've done a lot of render streams. Mm-hmm. So yes. What would you say is your are your top three favorite renders you've done? Oh god, that is not easy. I've done so many. It is hard to remember. Oh man, Go on. pick your favorite that... child. You get to well, pick kinda... three. Get to pick three. Okay. Um, That's okay man. That was that was my excitement for Ru- for Ru- finally getting a. <laughs> um, I mean, geez, I'm trying to think at the top of my head. What are some ones that really stick in my head? Um. Let's think. Uh, I mean, there was one that I did. I think it was with my OC Rui, where he um, where he was like, "Well, was this the re- again?" Because this was just a request. He was like, kind of, this is kind of a dark thing, but so just heads up. But um, he was kind of like, I was just sort of told uh, to make a render of him, like, so just sort of holding a gun with a very terrifying, like a very sort of scary the look gun. on his face. Yeah, and oh man, it came out really, really well. Like I was horrified by it myself. <laughs> So that's probably one of them. Um, another one that I really loved. Oh yeah, okay. On a lighter note, um, another one I really loved was um, was a render I made for my little sister after she accomplished something that had been stressing her out for quite a while. Like um, it had been on her mind. I just kind of thought, well, she's finally going through it, and she finally conquered it. 
So I made a render of uh, my OC and her OC, just having a nice sibling cuddle. And uh, <laughs> actually, um, and yeah, and again, I, I was really, I was really happy with the result. And she really loved it. And um, yeah, so that's another one that I think lot that really sticks in my head pretty well. Um, and uh, whew, one more. Mm, oh, I got one. Let's. I'll just do one. It's uh, one that I did. I think just before I released episode four, I just did a render of Rui like sleep on asleep on the couch because that summed up how I felt. I was like so tired after working on it for so long. So um, probably that one. I think as well. It just kind of sums okay. up how I feel. Okay. But yeah, cool. there's, there's, there's three. All right. Thanks. Thanks for answering my question and look in chat. <laughs> Love you, Rooster. Oh boy. <laughs> she said, look in chat. What do we. In the discussion chat. Yeah, I'm taking a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for context, that was the first. Yeah, that's like cut off, and she like put it on. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like that's like. <laughs> yeah. I blocked out for a second. What happened? Oh, uh, don't worry. It's just something Kitty Cat did. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, Roy, you want to select the next person? We'll bring them up sure. for you. Sure. Um, let's see. You'll go with. Hmm. I'm at Blue Sparrow. Okay. Bring them up. up you go. Uh, you are muted. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hello there. Hello there. Hi. Hi. I just want to say to to Ann's boys and Gabby, you guys are the best doing the voice acting for your characters, even for Sonic and Amy. Oh, thanks. Wait, what? Uh, uh, yeah, I got I got a question for Gabby, also known as doing the new queen. It's saying about me. <laughs> All right, here's two or two questions. What what would happen if you were hired for Sonic Sony Two if Kian Kian's sister Ames were sick or busy for the voice of Amy? It's saying about me. <laughs> and the other one is, will you do a hey, hey, Okay, okay, uh, sorry, sorry, but this is supposed to be a Q&A specifically for Rui, and if you can, if you don't have a question for him, I'm going to have to put you down, if, if that's okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 sorry, sorry. It's just, I'm, I'm very, I know how I am a voice acting for so much about... I am so sorry. <laughs> yes, don't please, worry about direct it. Your, please direct your questions only to Rui, please. This is not about me, this is not about Gabby. Just going to... All right. All right. So I'm going to select someone else. Uh, me? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, okay. How about, uh, let's do Sega game. I'm 007. All right. Call him up. Duke. Blah. Uh, hello there. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Finally. You are heard. At least my mic ain't working. <laughs> like, uh, my mic. <laughs> Anyway, um, my question, Rui, um, do you plan to add any more Transformer characters in the future? I get asked this question quite a bit, and not that it's a bad question, like, because some people are obviously just curious. Um, I know. But um, honestly, I would, there are plenty of other characters I would love to add in there, like, because um, like, the, the roster of Transformers is insane. The, there are, like, so many yeah. characters in there. Like, uh, and there are lots that I would love to add. Um, but ultimately, because I've got, like, two franchises kind of fused together, it's you kind of kind of prioritize like who you want where like i mean um like who will be yeah, the best fit and everything so like um, i'm probably not in this current season but in future seasons there's a good chance i would like to bring some more in later but for the current season i'm just sort of going to stick with things with kind of the current cast that i have and some characters will still be revealed uh later down the road eventually that i still have yet to appear in the current season but for so now i'm sort of sticking with a pretty i say fairly basic cast but yeah. I do hope to expand upon it eventually. Oh, yeah, because it would be pretty cool to see more Transformer characters, especially from G1. Yeah, like, I mean, that's got a really big roster in there. And like I said, there are, plus it also depends, like, of course, what kind of models I have access to and everything. Like, I can't just, because I'm not working in 2D, like, I can't just simply draw the character. Like, I've got to get, you know, something made fresh from scratch, get it read, get it, all that. So it's, like, getting things, getting assets for 3D is no simple task. So, um, again, it comes down to lots of different factors, but in the future, I would definitely love to bring more characters in. Gotcha. Also, before I go back down to the uh, to the audience, I just want to say nice use of Devastation Optimus. That's very hey, good. Thank you. Very yeah, I do well like done. Devastation models. Yeah, much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, you do really good work, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. It means a lot. Thanks for thanks for your question, Sega Gamer. You're welcome. Also, uh, 
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay, I can. I'm gonna go back down now. Okay. Thanks for the question. Uh, so before we ask, bring up someone else. I have another question. Okay. Can we, what started your fascinations with with fighter jets? Ooh, okay. So um, I was one, I was hoping that maybe we'd get a uh, question about this. So for those that don't know, yes, like I mean, I am a really like yes, Sonic and Transformers I do love a lot, but my other big one of my other big franchises I love is Top Gun. Um, like those movies are are my all time favorites. I consider them the best movies ever. That is in my humble opinion. But the way that love all started was just because I've always been a huge sucker for. I'm a big thrill of high speeds and freedom. Like, so that's kind of why I've was drawn to Sonic a lot. Cause he's all about, you know, moving fast and, you know, just sort of living in living freely. And the thing is when you look at fighter jets and like, and all that, and like, um, literally like you can just sort of go up towards, well, you just, it's all about, you know, just sort of soaring through the dark blue heavens and just being as free as the wind. And like, um, yeah, like it's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to put into words, but I mean, I think it's just the sense of freedom you get, from that sort of thing is why I really love it so much. Like, and for those who are wondering, it that was initially my dream job to be a pilot, but um, but I think, uh, but then again, like, I along the way, I kind of realized that there were certain things involved with it that I thought I wasn't sure if I was up to the task. And I mean, hey, I probably made the right call because you know here I am now making animations and everything, and yeah, I'm really loving life. So I mean, as much as I still, I've and the passion for aviation, of course, is still there. It's never really died, but um. But yeah, like, I mean, it's, um, it's been with me for years and I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. So I do appreciate someone, uh, asking that question, MC. Thank you. All right. And um, Gabby, mind calling someone else up? Gotcha. All right. I'm a, okay. There are like two, like two or three people that already had their hands up. Um, okay. I'm hoping, um, Nervous Maria's mic is working. Please work. Not... I don't know if they're they're uh God. at this point I should just uh okay uh yeah it's call someone else uh hey uh to see okay I'm going with Kevin why not all right hey Kevin uh, hey uh while, while we're waiting on our, our Maria there I have, I have another question for for Rui if if what would be like your green crossover like you had to cross over. Like a crossover between Sonic and any other franchise, what would it be? Because I know, I know you've done Sonic and Transformer, but what, what, yep. what's one like you really, really would like to do or really would like to see? Ooh, um, let me think. Is lots of things I do are really like um very crossover related. Like I mean, um, like as my Tornado Squad series is just kind of uh, is just based around it's kind of like Sonic events, but it's like based around Top Gun and Ace Combat. Um, all my Knights of the Sky uh, stuff that's like, you know, Sonic and the Black Knight fused with How to Train Your Dragon. So, I mean, I've kind of got a few other things lined up. So, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know, really. Like, I mean, probably um, maybe I'll just go with like, uh, well, I mean, I think it would be kind of cool to see like uh, some sort of like, uh, maybe not like a, not maybe not like a 100% crossover, but maybe kind of like somewhat of a fusion of, um, Maybe like Black Knight era Sonic and How to Train Your Dragon, like or at least bring in like some of the dragon species or whatever from that universe. I think that would be pretty cool because I do love How to Train Your Dragon a whole lot as well. So, um, yeah, that, I'd probably go with that one. Yeah, uh, that'd be interesting. Like, it'd be it'd be fun to see like how how like Sonic and the Black Knight characters how they would interact with the characters from How to Train Your Dragon. So- yeah, and I think that would also be an interesting way to see, like, you know, if if you were to bring in, like, some of those human characters from those movies, like Hiccup and Astrid and all them, like, would they be, like, humans again? Or would they be, like, um, who knows, maybe you could put together, like, some sort of Mobian designs for them or something like that. Like, again, this is just concepts, but uh, but still, like, I mean, I think that one could probably have a bit of potential as well. Like, I could feel like, um, I feel like something could uh, work with that. Imagine that, though. Yeah, That's but um, also, I'm well, since we're on the topic of um, Knights of the Sky, am I able to tell a little story real quick? Yeah, sure. All right, hey. Okay, so um, so you guys remember the um the Black Knight panel you guys did a couple months ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I actually I believe I've told you this story already, Gabby. But um, it was actually through that panel I came up with the idea for Knights of the Sky. Um, oh, very nice. It's because um, because everyone is I'm sure some of you guys may remember like everyone in like the audience was uh sort of renaming themselves like you know 
you know, username night of something. And because yeah, at the time my OC Rui was a fighter pilot. So um, at the time I just kind of thought, well, let's go night of the sky. Like, you know, whatever that makes sense. But then it was through the question MC asked the cast where it was, um, he asked, have you guys thought about doing anything with dragons? And then it clicked. It just, it hit me I, like bolt upright. The idea was there. Like, you know, um, you know, you know, sort of knights of the sky, the dragon riders kind of thing. And because my sister loves how to train your dragon a whole lot as well. So then I've always wanted to do something with her on the channel. So I thought this is perfect. Like, I mean, I can get her to make an OC herself and then we can just, this can kind of be our thing. Like, you know, it's something for me and her, like, um, you know, our OCs in the black Knight world, just uh, dragon riders. So, um, I suppose I should probably thank the Revo team because if you guys didn't do that black Knight panel, that that little thing on my channel probably wouldn't exist. Yeah, we'll shout out to Shane and everybody else on that panel for putting that together and give you inspiration. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, thank you guys again. Like, and it was just kind of a—I know it was kind of a bit of a, it was a bit of a coincidence, but well, I mean, well, it wasn't really a coincidence, but like, I mean, like, yeah, again, like it's just, um, it's it was pretty crazy how like just, but that just kind of shows you how ideas can just sort of, sort of spawn from out of nowhere. Like, I mean, because like, there was something that never crossed my mind until literally that all happened on and when it unfolded. And here we go. I've now got this little, uh, thing on my channel. So yeah. Hey, we're happy when we inspired you with that. Yeah. Thank you guys again. Thank you very much. And thank you for answering my question. And thanks Another for your problem. question, Kevin. Okay. Now I've got another text question from auto soldier. And says, what type of Optimus Prime from other types do you prefer and why? Ooh, so what's my favorite version of Optimus? So I guess that's what they're asking. Well, okay, so I'll I'll answer that. So like um so my favorite version of Optimus, I mean, ooh, it's kinda hard to put it past G1 Optimus just because G1 Optimus is like a comfort character to me. Um like well, he's one of my comfort characters. Like, I mean, he did a lot for me when I was a kid and when I was going through a very rough patch personally. I won't get into too much detail, but um but yeah, he, he's done a lot for me throughout my life. Um, cause for those who have seen G1 or know G1 Optimus, he's, um, he's very much like a big father figure to a lot. And I've heard lots of Transformers fans say things like, um, Optimus was like a better father to them than their own father was. I'm not speaking that for myself. My father's a great father and everything, but, um, but still like Optimus was kind of like, he was like the other, the other big inspiration, the other sort of, sort of father figure, I suppose that you could kind of, I felt that you could open up to like someone that would listen. Like, so I guess just for personal reasons. Yeah. I've got to give it to G1 Optimus. Very nice. Okay. Let me see if I can call anyone else up and Nova. Well, let's call up Nova again. Yep. Yeah, Cause I think he had another one. Yo, what's Hello up again? again. Hello. What's Yo. your new question? <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to ask my second question, but I'm going to, my roommate did ask a question. But he's too shy to ask it himself, so I'm gonna ask it for him anyways. Okay. So his question was, "Do you, for what we, do you wish his Jetfire was in Trans Transformers Devastation?" Ooh, um, so I, uh, do I wish Jetfire was in TF Devastation? I think he would be a really cool addition. Like he is my second favorite uh, Transformer behind Optimus. Um, and again, probably shouldn't be a huge shock because, you know, he transforms into a jet and, um, I do kind of relate to his backstory a bit as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be cool to see him in there, but then again, it'd be kind of hard to see how it would work in TF Devastation because when you look at the gameplay mechanics for that game, you know, like, yes, I mean, you, you fought like other flying characters like Starscream and Blitzwing and all them, but, um, but still it'd be kind of interesting to see like how they would bring in a flight capable character into that like would it kind of break the game like would he just be the one everyone goes to kind of thing so and i think maybe if it was planned out it could work but i'm not too sure like i mean trust me i'd love my boy jetfire don't get me wrong but but still yeah like at the same time i'm not too sure if he would fit in that game per se i think like the fall of cybertron games and all that they're like um the better sort of they're more well suited for his kind of uh abilities and wheelhouse uh I can I can see that. I just don't know why my character is not in any more spotlight. It's because don't know what likes you. Shut up, Star Starsley. Get out of my room. <laughs> anyway, thanks for your question, Nova. Okay. Well, well, my my second question was, if for Rui again, uh, uh, if uh, you. Uh, 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 we already, if asked, you we already have, asked one question. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to move you back to the audience. You can raise your hand and, and raise your hand again, and we'll answer it. 
Yeah, later. Sorry about that. Anyway, Ray, you want to come up with someone else? Um, yeah, sure. Let's see who we got. Um, do you want to give uh, Nervous Maria one more try or? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Let's see. Um, let's get some, let's get Rocket up here again then. Okay. All right. The boy's back home. And yeah, um, good to be back again. And yep. all right. So what was my question? Um, for Rui, um, mm -hmm. what are you? Your top five favorite Transformers shows. Ooh, okay. Um, let's think. So, well, the top three is pretty easy. So, again, this is sort of in no particular order because it's kind of hard to choose. Um, I'd say G1, Animated, Prime, um, Beast Wars, and hmm, probably Armada, I think. Yeah, I think that'd be my top five. I wish I wanted to get into the other shows. The only one I've seen out of all of them, surprisingly, I only watched Prime out of all of them. I mean, that's a good one to start with, and it can be kind of hard to pin down the others because a lot of them aren't really like on streaming services. Like I know, um, like I know the new one, Earth Sparks on Paramount Plus and everything, but still, like, a lot of the older ones, like uh, like twenty, like two thousand one, Robots in Disguise or G One and Beast Wars, they're not really like on any streaming service as far as I'm aware. So it's not easy to get a hold of those shows but um anyway ah hmm, that makes sense i just gotta find a way to like uh watch the other shows because with prime as i recall though because prime was on youtube as i recall yeah i know hasbro uploads um well actually that's true actually because i think hasbro's uploaded just about all of g1 onto their youtube channel so again i'm not entirely sure about that because like i've just got the whole collection like personally so i just watch it that way but um but still like um but anyway so um but anyway, um, um, but yeah. Anyway, thanks yeah. for your question, Rocket. All right. If Optimus Prime was here, he would have said to all you guys, Autobots, enjoy Rui's panel. I hope he would say that. <laughs> I think he would. Yeah, he would. I don't know much about him, but I know he would. Yeah, yeah probably. He's a really nice guy. He's a really great guy. Yep. He's also an inspiration, inspiration to me. To many, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is Bumblebee. He'll be our best friend. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the question. Hey, Blue has right, a text Make me a sandwich, sandwich now. No. Yeah. Bye. -bye. No. Right. We are not <laughs> making that sandwich. Find a smoothie. <laughs> anyway, right now I got a text question from True Blue. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. It says, I'm asking this at the moment while stealing your M16. How does it feel knowing you might be an inspiration to people who don't feel like they would they wouldn't be able to do you know to do with what you do with animation and story writing as a whole? Because honestly, you're one of the main inspirations for me to get new dawn off the ground and you'll always be great and I'll always be grateful you brought me in at a Sonic and B for Sonic and the Autobots. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I want you to let me read that. That's my baby. Anyway. I mean, you can if you want to. I just pulled it up. I so but he already took yeah. it anyway. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little tired, so. <laughs> now nah, you're good, you're good. Um, but yeah, so, uh, well, I do appreciate the kind words there, Blue. Um, I know you and I uh, give each other quite a bit, but uh, no, you're, my, you're, my, you're a good mate of mine. Like, it's a blast uh, working with you on many different things. Um, I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that, like, I would be considered an inspiration to some, because, like, you know, because as I've kind of said before, like, I mean, I get the start of the panel, like, um... Like, you know, I've looked up to the likes of M... Oh, and is it MC by mistake? I mean, it's good. It's great working with you, MC, doing it wrong. But I meant to say, uh, like, uh, Bolina Productions, Sasso, uh, Shadow759. Like, all, again, like, all those guys I've looked up to. And I mean, now I'm kind of, like, uh, I'm, like, actually, like, on speaking terms with them. Like, I talk to them quite a bit now. Like, sort of, you know, get to exchange. So it's just kind of surreal how, like, your life... You can go from being just, like, you know, from, like, just being, like, sort of... A, to someone who wants to aspire to be something... And then you sort of evolve into someone that inspires others. Like that's still something that I find I have, I really struggle to comprehend. It's like, cause I don't really think I'm um, that big of a deal. Like, I mean, I've got what, 45,000 subscribers roughly, which is still a big number, but compared to some of these other guys, like, you know, like, like Steve and Jim and all that, like they've got like, you know, just about a million each. And I'm just kind of like, really? Like, I mean, so the fact that people can consider me an inspiration that I'm very humbled. Um, and that means a lot to me. Um, and I just, it kind of baffles me that like, uh, that some people may look up to me that way. Um, it's something I never thought would be possible, but, um, I suppose the world's full of surprises, isn't it? 
Indeed. Yeah, hopefully that answers the question. It should. Yes, it does. All right. Does it? Okay, now, Gabby, want to call up the next person? Dang. Um, all right, Dino Kaiju. Get up here. Get up here. Anyway. I'm here once again for another question. All right, what do we got? All right. So, uh, Rui, my question for you. So, mm-hmm. of course, you being an animator, I'm quite, quite curious to know. Um, during the process, uh, and the, or I guess you could say the production of Sonic and the Autobots, um, was it hard for you at first to try to do the transformation for a lot of the Cybertronian characters? Ooh, um, that's a good question, actually. Um, I th- mean, it wasn't super hard because the way it all really is is like, is, uh, you've got two separate models. You've got the vehicle model and the robot model. And basically, so the way I would do it, or the way I do it at least, is like, um, often is like, you just kind of, um, you look at the general characters. Because the good thing is like, you can sort of see where certain parts go where, like with Optimus Prime, like, you know, like, you know, the, uh, the truck cabin, that's his body. Um, like his arms kind of fold into that. His head goes in there. His legs kind of become the, uh, the, uh, the rear of it and everything. So I suppose you can kind of just, you can sort of see where the parts go where, and you just sort of, um, you sort of look at how he would kind of sort of transform into that kind of mode. So basically you just kind of, you sort of get it, you sort of just try to visualize it in your head and then you sort of take it step by step. And then you just kind of work into it. And then, yeah, I, guess, I suppose not too, too difficult to do because, and because most of those transformations happen really quickly. Like, I mean, it only has to last like a couple of frames. So it doesn't have to look super pretty by anything. Like if it was like, you know, a slow transformation thing, like you see in the live action movies, like, um, like how, like, you know, they sort of very detailed and like very sort of thing, but that's not really what I'm doing here. It's kind of, they're pretty, they're like very short, very quick kind of, you know, you know, vehicle mode, robot phone mode, like, you know, not even like a second later, they're like, you know, standing up and walking around. So, um, yeah, they, they won't say they're super difficult to do. Like, I mean, at first, maybe it took a bit of getting used to, but I can, they're not, they're definitely not one of the, they're de- not super hard for me now. Ah, gotcha. That, that's understandable too, because I thought, because I, because I thought for sure that maybe when you were like starting the, the, the show and all that, so I was like, okay, time to animation. Up. Oh, wait, I forgot. These things can transform. Oh, God. But no, I assume that things must have been easier. And especially for Optimus, like, maybe, like, for, for some, they could use, like, uh, like even, like, using the original G1 toy, because that is, like, one of the most simple transformations to do, especially for, like, a G1 Optimus Prime. Yeah, exactly. Um, So, like, that's the thing. Like, some characters, of course, are easier than others. Like, I'd say the Devastation models I have, they're definitely easier to work with compared to, like, some of the uh, War for Sabatron models and everything, because they're a bit more detailed, a bit more kind of... um. You know, there's like a bit more to them, but uh, but still, like you know, um, you know, with enough practice, and again, I've been animating for probably close to five years now, so I've gotten enough practice in to say the least. Ah, I see, and that's understandable too, because I, I did see like in the later episodes, like uh, like for example, when Ironhide and uh, I believe Jetfire and Air Raid as well, like they have different models for their vehicle modes as compared to their robot forms. Yeah, because of course, like unfortunately, that's a limitation thing due to um how uh, like uh, <coughs> pardon me um that's kind of like a, it's a limitation like of course what models because of course Ironhide and Air Raid and all and they weren't in Transformers Devastation. I'd rather have a consistent you know sort of design for all of them, but you know when you have when you're on like a low budget and everything, you have to make do with what you have. So um so again, it's not the worst outcome in the world. Like at least the characters still get to be in there, but um but yeah, like you know you just gotta make do with what you have. It is what it is, as they say. It yeah. is Woody. Indeed. <laughs> and yeah, that pretty hey, much... Thanks for the question, Gadget. Hey, no problem. And uh, yeah, thank you for the answer, Rui. And as Ironhide will always say, liquid nitrogen. <laughs> what? No worries, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Later. Okay, now, I saw up earlier, we got a text question from Michael the Wolf. It was, have you ever had to deal with your videos being labeled made for kids? Yes, I have. And um, I was actually oh. kind of wondering if this was going to come up. So just to be clear, guys, yes, I've been hit with that too. It doesn't matter if you're a big content creator or a little one, you will get hit. I've been hit, oh, I think four times maybe now. Episode one of Sonic and the Autobots got hit. Um, one of my uh, old scenery makes got hit. Um, a Son Amy video I did got hit. Um, the Son and- Amy one. <laughs> Yeah, you might know which one I'm talking about, uh, but uh, I know what you're talking about. That sucks. Yeah. 
I know. Yeah. Like, so, um, again, guys, and I know I'm, I know I'm kind of like quoting what lots of other, you know, sort of what like, you know, lots of other animes have said, but it's a problem across the board. And it doesn't, it literally kind of proves that if I can get hit by this stuff, no one is safe. Like, it doesn't matter how, like, you know, how, if whether you've got a massive following, a small following, a popular video, a like, you know, not so popular video, it w YouTube will come for you. YouTube is gonna, they don't uh, care about content creators at pretty much at this point. So, I mean, I don't really want to get on a rant for too long, but yes, I've been hit. It sucks, but hopefully, like, I've, like, you know, I've been talking with lots of the other animators that have uh, had to deal with uh, this garbage. Um, Hopefully, we can rise up somehow and find a light at the end of the tunnel, because believe me when I say, guys, this, it's not fair, like, because, like, you know, we live off of, you know, interacting with everybody and made for kids that just robs us of that. So, um... Yes, yeah, so basically, again, I've thankfully I haven't been hit in a while, but still, like, I mean, I <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm gonna that doesn't mean I'm immune from it. I'm sure at some point down the road it will happen again, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. If we just swear in videos now, <laughs> well, I mean, that doesn't even cut it either. Like, literally, there's been the problem is like, because uh, there's even a thing now, like, where if you do swear too early in a video, it'll be like, oops, sorry, okay. Like, we have to, like, you know, take monetization points off of that. Like, literally, it, you can't make anything now. Like, it doesn't matter. It's either going to be, you make it too, you know, you, you make it too, like, you know, sort of child friendly and everything, it'll be marked as made for kids. You make it too dark, it'll be marked as, like, you know, not safe for any viewers kind of thing. So it's like, what do you want, YouTube? Like, I mean, pfft, again, that, that, that website's just eating itself alive at this point. I, pfft, what more? I don't know what else I can say. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I have another question. Can yep. you tell us a little bit about your thing with Formula One racing? With Formula One? Okay, yes. Yeah. So um yeah, so for those who don't know, I am a big Formula One fan. Um I didn't get the chance to go to the Australian Grand Prix earlier this year. Unfortunately, funds have been a bit tight for me, but um, but yes, I do enjoy uh, that. I know some people kind of say it's been kind of boring the past couple of years with a certain Dutch driver by the name of Max Verstappen's domination. Um, but look, it's not really his fault. He's a really good driver and he's just got the fastest car. So what more can you say? It's like the best of both worlds. No one can catch him. But um, but still, like, I enjoy the sport for what it is, um, the competitive aspects and like, like, you know, they're the fastest cars in the world. And like, um, whilst I'm more of a plain person, I do like cars a whole lot as well. Pretty much anything that just makes a loud noise and goes really quick just has my name on it. So basically like, um, like, as I kind of said before, I'm a big, I'm a sucker for adrenaline. So like, um, that thing, that sort of thing just always really appeals to me. And I, uh, may or may not have something lined up for the future, not for a little while, but, um, I do have something lined up that could be partially related to Formula One. I think some people in here might actually know what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe not. Exactly. It's still a ways <laughs> off, but um, but let's just say, yes, yeah, something may be a coming. Secret. Hush be hush. Yes, there's a few uh, sort of super secret projects in the works, to say the least. Right. Anyway, we got another text question from Nova. Question for Rui. Okay. If you had to have a Transformers OC, what would it be and what would the vehicle mode be? Ooh, okay. Um, that's a pretty easy question, actually. So, um, I would make him a uh, to get specific. I'd go with um an F eighteen Super Hornet, which is my favorite fighter jet of all time. Uh, I consider it to be the best all rounder. Like, it can dogfight. It can perform ground strikes. It's a naval aircraft. Um, it can also, of course, which means of course you know, like an open right with the navy, but as well as like uh, on land and everything. And it's also a big part of the Australian Air Force as well. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a bias. But uh, yeah, and like, and for anyone who's like, you know, who may not know what kind of aircraft I'm talking about, if anyone's seen Top Gun Maverick, it's the star plane from that film. So like the aircraft that you see all those guys flying there, it's that plane. So um, yeah, like I, that that would be my go-to, like, you know, top speed, Mark 1.8. Um, yeah, like, uh, that. Yeah, that's just my go-to plane. That's what I would, if I could be a Transformer, that's what i transform into. Nice. Now, another question is, do you have a favorite Sonic game? Ooh, okay. So I kind of answered this before, but I'll answer it again just for the sake of it. Um, so that would be definitely Generations. Um, that was, although it wasn't my first Sonic game, that was the game that really got me hooked. Like, um, I loved every inch of that game. Um, and as I kind of said, like I said earlier, like, um, 
it's because like it had like levels from previous games and everything. I got curious about like the classic era on the Genesis, the adventure era on the Dreamcast and all that. So like, if I hadn't played Generations, I probably wouldn't have thought about going back to try out all the old school games from the 90s and everything. So that was the game that kind of made me like I was already kind of into Sonic, but Generations was the game that made me a hardcore fan. So, yeah. Go nuts. Nice. Now we got another question. Text question from, from Auto so- Soldier. Text question from. Uh, yeah, t- do you yeah, know text, Gundam? Text question from, uh, it says yeah, like. Do, do you know Gundam? If if you don't, it's an anime mobile suit robot since 1979. I am aware of uh, what uh, Gundam is. I've seen a little bit of it. I'll be honest; it doesn't really appeal to me, though. It just doesn't really capture me the same way Transformer stuff does. I know that might surprise some, but I'm not super into things like um. Like just because, like, yes, I, I'm really I love Transformers with all my heart, but I'm not necessarily like um that doesn't necessarily mean every single thing from like that involves giant robots is going to appeal to me. Like Gundam, not really. I thought Pacific Rim was okay and cool and everything, but at the same time, like it doesn't hit me the same way. So it is. What about know, Power Ranger? I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, Power Rangers. That's another thing. Like Power Rangers, that doesn't really hit me either. Fair enough. But still, yeah, that that that, that, that that's a fair enough question though. Yeah. All right, now, do we have anyone else in, here to answer, to ask questions? Raise your hand I up and we'll call you. Never asked, I actually never asked a question, but I kind of wanted to. Okay, sure. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Out of the animation programs that you use, which one was the most difficult to get through? Ooh. Well, okay. So I've only really used two. So Source Filmmaker was what I started with. Um... And of course, now I'm pretty much almost 100% in Blender, which I mean, in regards to general quality and overall kind of what you can do with the thing, like Blender is definitely the better one. Um, as to say what was harder to master, I'm honestly going to have to say Blender was harder to master because um, with the thing with SFM, it's very, it's very good for beginners, but it is very limited at the same time. So um, if you want to get your feet wet with animation, and at least see what the whole deal's about, I'd say start with that. But if you really want to like try and learn the real nitty gritty and really try and uh, go all the way, then just go straight to Blender because you can do so much more things with Blender. Like, um, you know, you can make models in there. You can create, you know, particle effects. Um, like uh, you can do so much more with Blender and the gen- and the overall quality is just more amazing. So I definitely say Blender took me a lot longer to get the hang of. And because that's the thing, like, is that when you go from one software to another, it's kind of like trying to learn a new sport in a way. It's like, um, it's like, you know, you've got to try and like, you may have familiarity with one thing, but it's kind of like, um, well, it's almost like going from like a motorcycle, uh, no, like a bicycle to a motorbike, I suppose you could say. Like, um, it's just the next leg up. So, um, yeah, if that answers your question, I'd say Blender was a bit harder for me, but I mean, I'm here now. And even, even then, like I'm, I, although I'm pretty well versed with the program now, there's still some things I don't know. I'm still asking questions to, uh, some of my other animator friends. So. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some people struggle with that. I can see what you, I can see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and that's the thing. Like, I know it's it's definitely not for everyone working. Like, I know some people. Like, like for those who are wondering, like, I can't draw for the life of me. Like, I suck at drawing. Um, which is why I turned to three D. But I know some people who have like you know who are really good at drawing, but they try three D and they just couldn't work it out. And again, like you know, some people like just have different preferences and. Uh, some people, you know, it's just some things click with some things that other things don't. Like, you know, like, you know, drawing, I just can't seem to master. But working in 3D it just seemed to work for me. So, I mean, everyone's different, I suppose you could say, just to put it simply. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, that looks like Nova has another question. I'm going to call him up. Okay. Here's, my, here's my hilarious question for Rui. On a scale yep. of one to... 10 how, how funny do you think of starscream abuses oh so like uh, i know i know what you're getting alex so it's kind of become a thing where i do my random render streams where starscream just cops a lot of abuse from many other characters i mean he kind of deserves it because he's a bit of a jerk but uh, at the same time he is still one of my favorite decepticons so it's kind of a mixed bag for me i suppose you could say like um on one hand it's you know if he deserves it but on the other hand it's kind of like uh it's like does he get too much like does he cop too much i don't know well, well it's because the starscream keeps backstabbing megatron like he wants to be leader of the decepticons but no oh he kept freaking failing exactly like um he, that's the thing like i mean like it's like i said he kind of deserves that kind of abuse but at the same time i don't know like everyone kind of has their limits so i mean it's uh yeah i mean again it's just kind of the way things go 
I mean, that's fair for the question. All right, no problem. Thanks for the question. Mm, all right, you're welcome. Okay, if does anyone else? Have? Oh, we got rain boom. Let's bring our. I pressed it on accident. Uh, decline, decline if you must. I accidentally hit it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Let's bring boom. Hello, right. everyone. How are you all hey, doing Ray. so far? Hey, boom. Doing good. I'm doing well. So, um, I have a question to Rui. Since now you mentioned and then when you, since now you've mentioned in about the Hollow Dream Dragon, um, so um, do you have any particular particular favorite dragons? You know? oh, definitely, definitely the Night Fury. Um, like so, for those that haven't seen Hollow Dream Dragon, the Night Fury that is Toothless's species. Um. Pretty much everything. It's I know that might say, I know that's probably not the most original answer, but the thing is, toothless. He moves like a fighter jet. He's quick. He's precise. He's sleek. Like what more can I say? Like I mean, that is just my type of dragon. Like if and I've said this before, like on um, other live streams. Like if I could have any pet in the whole wide world, like from any universe or any fictional thing, it would be a night fury. I would want that more than anything. That to me is just my ideal pet. So yeah, it would definitely be a Night Fury. Indeed. And Tufa is one of my favorite dragons from the Hollow Train Your Dragon as well. I love the part oh, where yeah, he like, dances like a little what is it? I'm kidding. Oh, that was the <laughs> third one, I think. If I assume I assume I know what you're talking about. Wait, what? No, I was talking about the meme, but okay. Oh, the meme. Well, there was one moment in the third one where he's trying to impress the Light Fury, where it's kinda like a dance, but I mean <laughs> <laughs> I, oh yeah it's funny how how you mentioned in the the, the tuples dance meme thing <laughs> I mean, it, everywhere that meme <laughs> it's cheese so and quakers yeah, there it is in the chat i can see now <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well i guess that i guess that'll be answering my question so um yeah yeah no worries thanks rainbow thank you you're very welcome so I hope you guys enjoyed the panel as well. So take care, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Take, take care, Rainbow. Okay, looks like Nervous Maria finally ans answered asked a question. Do you like to? Uh, what do you like more, to create videos or play games? Ooh, like a favorite child. <laughs> Again, yeah, I get asked this quite a bit. Um, <laughs> well, let me think. Is it's interesting? Is like. Whilst I do love making stuff, it does get stressful a lot of the time. Like, especially because, like, I've kind of confirmed this. Like, I often work on animations about six to seven hours a day. So it can become a drag sometimes. Like, uh, if, um, <clears throat> like, you know, after a while, as much as it, like, it, but it's always so satisfying once you finish it. And, like, when you put it up and, you know, you get to see, you get to entertain so many other people with it. So, um, like, I suppose maybe the accomplishments I prefer when it comes to like, making content, but in just the general moment, it would probably be games because in most cases, like, you know, when often I play games, it's often with my mates that I've like known for like 12 years. And like, we all just like whenever we're just like all in like a room together, we just go completely off the wall. So <laughs> it's just a whole it's just a lot of good fun. And like, it just kind of allows you to get lost in the moment kind of thing, which again, animation kind of does the same thing, but in a different way. Yeah, very good answer. Anyway, let's see if we can bring anyone else up. Uh, let's bring Rocket back up. Game? And no, we are not going to make your sandwich. Oh <laughs> Correct. Okay, I'm out. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but okay, I will ask. I really. Why are your friends so crazy in streams? They're wild animals. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, are you, so I need to be clear, are you talking about my voice cast or my IRL mates, like my Tornado Squad group? <laughs> Which ones? Oh! <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay. so you should, you're probably right, actually, yeah, because that, that kind of fills in the gap for both, to be, to be fair. <laughs> so, I mean, look, look, so for those that don't really know, when I do live stream, I often get special guests, like Gabby's there pretty frequently, uh, True Blue's also listening in, he's there often fr pretty frequently. Heck um, yeah! And it's always fun in games, don't get me wrong, there's no real drama or anything, but it does go really unhinged super quickly. But to be fair, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like, although it can be a bit just like, oh my god, a lot of the time, but the thing is, is like, um, it's all just, you know it deep down, it's all just fun, and it just, it keeps everyone in good spirits. 
And I mean, at the end of the day, even if you are just like throwing insults at each other the whole time, you know, like, it's like, like I said, like I said, me and my mates, we've known each other for over a decade. And like, they're probably the closest thing I've got to brothers in some ways. Like I've got a little sister, but you know, those, my tornado squad guys and everything, they're the closest thing I have to brothers. So, um, I wouldn't, although they're complete Nimrods a lot of the time, I wouldn't trade them for anyone else. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if they're listening in on Twitch, but, uh, or whatever, but, uh, Yeah. Yeah, just to, to those to, my, to all my boys, uh, I wouldn't trade you guys for anyone else. Make sure yeah, they know worry. that. <laughs> no, they, I should worry. know that. No, I should know that. I, I, I'm running away now, playing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, they, don't get me wrong. Like you, 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 you don't, y'all are lucky that they are at least funny, though. They're funny at least, though. They're not like any filler art anime and all that stuff. Like no, they're actually funny. They're actually important to the plot. Yeah, like, I mean, and again, it's all just like, it's we all just like, whenever we do things, it's just all fun and games. Like, I mean, we just do things because we, well, it's fun. Like, I mean, if it wasn't fun, then we probably, you know, wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. At least that's the charm to the stream, at least, though. Like, you know, at present general, you just like to mess with each other, but obviously not in an abusive way, of course. Oh, no, yeah. And like, when I say, like, if we, like, if we give each other, when I say like, you know, we kind of quote unquote abuse each other, it's all, it's not proper abuse. It's just silly jokes, like maybe silly insults. It's not like nothing's personal. It's just to get it under each other's skin and just make each other laugh. Mm hmm. No, I, 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 I mean, I mean, I basically mean, um, I mean, I technically do that to you guys in voice chats too. So it's like, mm, yeah. And that's the charm. That's the funny part. Exactly. Because exactly. we're not mm -hmm. going to make your sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You, 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 uh, how about a smoothie? Okay, how about a smoothie? No. Oh, anyway, yeah, thanks for your question, Rocket. Mm -hmm, no problem. And really, put them in the cage someday. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> I mean, I think I'll I'll keep you guys free, but the boys, I don't know. I'm gonna have to maybe do something about that. <laughs> maybe I'll feed anyway. them a turquoise. My OC's dragon. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like we got a text question from Blue Sparrow. What are your okay. thoughts on the Transformers making a crossover with Angry Birds? Oh, uh, yes, that mobile game. Um, I played a little bit of it. I didn't play a huge deal of it because I'm not a huge Angry Birds person, but uh, I thought it was kind of cool for what it was. Um, uh, hold on a sec. <coughs> Mind me, just had to clear my throat. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's a cool concept. And again, like... Um, Again, like I probably don't have a huge opinion on it just because I said I didn't play it that much. And to be fair, I don't play a lot of mobile games either. Like I played a bit of Transformers Earthrise and um, but again, I haven't played touched that in like several years. And like I think the last mobile game I played in general was just um was probably Formula One mobile. Like I haven't played Sonic Forces Speed Battle in like over a year or two. Like again, it's just I just prefer mainstream games. But I mean, hey, if people play mobile games, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Yeah, you want to call someone up? Okay. Yeah. All right, all right, Dino Kaiju, you know what's up. I know right. what's up. I'm here once again for round three. Yeah, what do you got? Ready? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, time goes by really fast when you know it. Does yeah? <laughs> We're in there we yeah. an hour and fifteen minutes. I can't believe that. Yep. All right. So, anyway. uh, Earth, yeah, sure. Um, my other, my next question for you, Rui, is this. So, um, um. So, how was it for you trying to set off to find a uh, the uh, voice cast for the uh, for some of the characters? Like, I know, like for example, like obviously True Blue down there. Hello, True Blue. Uh, he's obviously Sonic. Gabby as Amy. Uh, Rio as Tails. MC as Knuckles and Eggman. And obviously, I assume and you. Oh, and up uh, Sonic. Uh, not Sonic. Uh, True Blue as Bumblebee and all that stuff. And I assume you. And obviously, you being most of the Transformers, was it hard for you to find a uh, the find the right cast? And while you even voiced some of the mostly of the Transformers cast. Um. So it wasn't super difficult per se. Um. Like. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, like, um, so basically like what I did when I started planning the series and everything, I sort of started looking around for people, different people I could sort of fit. I had different names lined up for like, you know, if they were maybe too busy or they just weren't doing voiceover requests at the time. 
But, you know, I, I sort of, you know, I listened to different voices I liked and who I thought could fit the character. So, as you said, like, uh, so Blue, I went uh, first for Sonic. MC, I really liked his Eggman and his Knuckles, so I went for that. And, of course, and I kind of already knew um, Blue and Doom make a really good Sonic Amy Pass or Sonic and Amy Pass. So, like, I just kind of thought, if, if I'm getting him in this, I better get her in this. So, uh, thankfully, she agreed to help as well. And as you said, yeah, so Rio was Tails. Initially, I had... um. I, uh, initially, um, I was going to have, uh, the, uh, the multi-fandom fangirl be Tails, but uh, some things came up on her end, so she had to, unfortunately, uh, decline. Uh, she did appear in episode three to fill in for Rio when she had a broken microphone, but, um, but yeah, but, uh, so that was, like, the reason why Rio got in on the series, but don't worry, um, yeah, Brittany or multi-fandom fangirl, she will return as a, uh, different character, or she's planned to return as a, uh, new character in some upcoming episodes, so, uh, she'll, uh, be back eventually. And, uh, but yeah, I just sort of look around for different voices and sort of, once I hear something that I feel like, yeah, I can hear that coming out of this, that, that voice coming out of this character, that's like what I went for. And like, um, again, like, cause, cause of course I, whilst I'm probably not as good of a voice actor as like some of these, uh, awesome people up here with me, but, um, I do enjoy voicing characters. I have always done, enjoyed that for a while. So I figured, you know, I'll give myself some of the weight to carry. So like, you know, like, I particularly enjoy doing some of the villains, like Megatron and Starscream were probably my two favorites to do. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I just kind of make sure, like, everyone has, like, I try to make sure the roles everyone enjoys doing. And some people just put their hands up to do roles. Like, I think, um, like, I think Blue put his hand up to do Bumblebee, I believe. Um, and another uh, mate of mine, Wade, he, um, he put his hand up to do, uh, to do, uh, Jazz, Cliff Jumper, and Wheeljack. So, um, basically, and MC, of course, actually put his hand up to do, uh, Ratchet. So, um, basically, like, uh, yeah. So, again, like, some of them just uh, put their hands up, like, yeah, yeah, like, um, I'll do the role. So, like, yeah, it's good to see that some people are willing to just kind of get involved and, uh, try something new, I suppose, at the same time. Can I do one of the Decepticons? I mean, <laughs> I mean well, well some guys, but if I get Slipstream in there, maybe. <laughs> oh my god, imagine Slipstream or, or, or Black Arachnia or Air, or Air. Arachnid. Oh, I don't know. I want to do my Black Doom voice on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it one of the Constructicons or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> oh great. Now, great. Now I can hear her saying Form Devastator or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And I was about to say also that uh, I thought... um. I thought you did some also some good voices there. Like I actually really like your side swipe because it almost sounds. Uh, it might be me, but it almost sounds identical to uh, Michael Bell's voice in um in uh I, either G one or Devastation. It almost sounded identical to me at least. Yeah, well, I appreciate that actually because um like uh because I did I do, I do try to draw inspiration from different uh, pre existing versions. Like you just said, Michael Bell was my inspiration for Sideswipe. Um, of course, Frank Welker is the inspiration for Megatron. Um, Tom Kenny is the inspiration for Starscream. Um, like for those who don't know, he was Starscream in um, uh, the animated show. Dude, I, I but, um, love his I love his Starscream animated. I believe he's actually set to return as Starscream in the upcoming film Transformers One. So if that is true, I'm really excited to see him uh, do Starscream again. But uh, but yes, like um, and of course, but as time goes on, you sort of can uh, evolve your performances. Like so, for Episode Five, I've kind of changed my performance of Optimus a little bit because previously I was trying to mimic Peter Cullen quite a bit, but that was a bit too hard for me. So I'm still keeping that Peter Cullen aspect, but I'm still going to try and make it a bit more of my own. So uh, it's a bit easier on me, and it still is um. It's not like, uh, and it's, it's so like that way. It just kind of, it just kind of, it sounds a bit more original. Yeah, that's understandable. And again, I mean, not to mention Peter Cullen is a legendary voice actor to this day. Oh, absolutely. Day. Not, not to mention Prime over the years has gotten a lot of voices. Like you got Gary Chuck, unless you count Optimus Primal. Uh, obviously, you have uh, David uh, David K for animated, Alan Tudyk for Earth Spark, etc., etc. Exactly. There's been lots of different voices for Optimus. And whilst Peter Collins probably the, always going to be the greatest, there has been lots of other really good ones, as you said. So, um, it's, um, yeah, there's, there's still lots of, uh, different areas you can draw from. Oh yeah. So Chris Hemsworth, yeah. you better, you better, if you got some shoes to fill in for this movie. I got mad respect for Chris, but we'll see how he goes. <laughs> hey, hey, thanks for your question, Dino. No problem. See you guys later. See you around. All right. Okay, nope. <laughs> It's okay, now I got another question in the text from Nova. If you're not a fan of Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015, then what if I tell you there's some main Decepticons in there? Yeah, so um so for those who don't know, um uh 
Robots in Disguise 2015, that is my least favorite Transformers show. I hate that show with a passion, just as much as I hate Sonic Lost World with a passion. And again, that's just my opinion. If someone likes that, that's fine. Like, no disrespect or anything. But, um, but yeah, like, that show just really, I just did not enjoy. So, like, I probably only got, I think, like, five or six episodes in, and then I just stopped. I'm like, nah, I'm done with this. I'm done with this show. I just couldn't go any further. So, um, again, yeah, it's, I know there's, like, some, like, some major characters in there that made some appearances but at the same time it was just kind of like yeah, i mean like I, again like i don't probably know enough about that show to really kind of get some inspiration from it but anyway hopefully that answers the question yep. all right uh gabby do you have any more questions you want to ask um i don't think i have one at the moment <laughs> or at all okay. okay we don't really have that many more hands raised uh, if you want, we can just end the panel r- right here and now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's fine by me. We did, did pretty well here. An hour and 22 minutes. Wow. Yep. We you had a lot of questions. One. Yes, we yeah, did. Yeah, lots of fun. All right. So anyway, thank you all for coming to this panel and talking with Rui. And Rui, do you have any more closing closing words you want to say? Um, well, first off, uh, thank you everyone that did take the time to tune in. Um, this was an honor to be uh, sort of featured for a QA. I don't often get asked to do these things pretty often. Like, uh, this is sort of the, I think, only the second kind of thing, second one of these things that I've done with uh, the first one not being uh, released yet because it was pre recorded. But, um, but yeah, this was a genuine honor. Like, um, I'm glad people enjoy what I make because I'm just a guy that makes stuff for fun, really. I don't try to be the best or anything, but, um, hey, if I can entertain some people at the end of the day, that's a win for me. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys, uh, for inviting me and, uh, thank you everyone for the kind words. I am so glad you're here, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, um, means an, yeah, that means a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Okay. Hey, Gabby, do you have any closing words? Or do the, co- do the co-hosts have any closing words? I don't think so, but... Uh... How about, how about we just uh, mention how about we just mention like the next the next cartoon night theme, right? Yep. How about that? Right. Yep. Yep. Anyway. Okay, next Okay. Cartoon. Okay, tune in tomorrow for the next cartoon theme, Nick Jr. That'll be happening on 4 p.m. PST or 7 p.m. EST. All right. Sounds like a good time. And I also want to bring up our next panel, which is going to be on Saturday. We have a Q&A with Luxar. All right, cool 3D artist. So anyway, thank you all for coming and thank you to Rowley and Gabby, and my host Gabby for hosting this with me. And I guess we'll all see you all some other time. See ya. See you guys. Thank you for coming.